ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads, and everyone else of all sexual persuasions, welcome to Now You See It with Scott Wells. Tonight, Scott's guests will include, from the dark recesses of a dusty brick-and-mortar magic shop, Jenny Haney. And from America's heartland, rich with milk and honey, Jania Taylor. Woo! From the city that is so good that they had to name it twice, this is your Eric DeCamp. And one of America's busiest restaurant magicians, David Corsero. Woohoo! Yeah! Yeah! Please welcome your host of Now You See It, the magician with tax appeal, Mr. Scott Wells. Good morning. When we talk about a late night show, I guess that's what it's really going to turn out to be. It might be an early morning show by the time we finally got the air rates uh, calmed down a little bit and everything. I want to thank each and every one of you, but I don't have time to come out and shake your hands, but I appreciate you staying up late to uh, try this little experiment. This is something I know that you haven't seen before, so let me kind of lay the groundwork and let you tell, tell you just a little bit about what's going on. It is a talk show. This is not a lecture. It was kind of billed as being a lecture, and actually it's not. Of course, this is just going to be, uh, envision some sort of uh, Johnny Carson type of uh, thing, but not in the Blue Jackets. Uh, which that we have some guests, we've got some commercials that will be shown that have a magic kind of a theme. You're in the studio audience as if that, uh, there's no applause sign or laughter, so this is going to be genuine and from your heart. If you happen to see or hear something that sounds funny or that looks like it might deserve some applause, please uh, do that. In fact, let's just try that now. If I can just hear a little bit of applause, see how that sounds? Yeah. Yeah. we can test the uh, audio over there then as well while we're uh, going to be filming this. And now for a laughter, like having three, like you just heard the funniest joke. One, two, three. <laughs> that sounds perfect. I think we got that uh, tuned up just about right. We're going to be having some great guests. Uh, well, that might be another one uh, good over there. If you hear one that's kind of a, a groaner, what do you do? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, well, you might hear a few of those tonight then too. So again, thank you guys very much for staying up over here. We're going to get right with our first guest right after this first uh, a message from our sponsor. Welcome to the magic world of Blackstone. It's incredible! Here, learn the ropes. That's amazing! My secret instructions make all my tricks easy. I'm doing magic! What's next, Blackstone? This! With props and performance table, the magic world of Blackstone in beginners, advanced, masters, and cassette by Pressman. Small Blackstone not included. I'm doing magic! When my son David has a cold, he's powerless. So when he's all congested, I know it does the trick. Robitussin cold. It has the power to make even the worst cold symptoms. Well, you know. Robitussin cold. Recommended by Dr. Mom. Copperfield. What are you getting, Norm? The usual short stack double bacon. I see. You're tired of the same old thing. Hey, aren't you Kreskin? The amazing Kreskin. And here's a tip from this Jersey boy. Get in the game. New bonus match from New Jersey Lottery. It's another chance to win. Add bonus match to your pick three or pick four numbers. Match just one number and cash in right away. I sent you could win up to $250. That's amazing, Kreskin. Now you got the name, so get in the game. Play new bonus match from New Jersey Lottery. Wouldn't it be great if with a magic sweep of the hand, we could make smog and air pollution disappear? Hi, I'm Lance Burton, Master Magician. Now in America, there are just about one car for every adult. The enormous amount of traffic on our roads often keeps pollution at dangerous levels, making it difficult to breathe, aggravating asthma and lung disease. How can we escape this? We can combine our daily trips, keep our cars maintained, and sometimes even find another way to get there. And we can choose to do it because it all adds up to cleaner air. And clean, alternatively fueled vehicles like these. Nearly every major manufacturer makes them. Cars, trucks, and buses that dramatically cut harmful emissions can really help clean our air. It all adds up to cleaner air.
Well, there we go. We're back. <laughs> We're back live then again. Uh, I want to uh, welcome, first of all, our first guest, someone that uh, you guys know very well. You have already spent some of your money over there, perhaps in the dealer room. You may have visited his shop, perhaps in Baltimore, or if you got to Las Vegas from time to time, you may have experienced uh, the magic of uh, Denny out there. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff to talk with Denny. We've got a little bit of time here this evening, and I want to please put, uh, welcome, if you would, Denny Haynes. Seat. Oh, I get to sit in the chair. That's right, you get the chair. I'm sorry, yeah. I don't have a little thing to kick out for your feet. That's right there, okay. Nobody right. was paging the curtain for me. Nothing. <laughs> well, nothing. how was the, How were the drinks back in the green room? Oh, they're good. Yeah, yeah the green room was great. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and you kind of see what was going on. Sorry about all of the uh, the, the fire drill. I guess that was a Baltimore. Oh, that's a, fire that's drill, okay. Yeah. That's okay. I enjoyed that. Uh, I, I got to smoke. Get out there. <laughs> Oh, you were the one? Uh, yeah. I okay, it was that smoke. Uh, yeah, they, I hit about four or five of them before we came back in. <laughs> so that's what yeah. must have come through the door. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. Yeah. It was uh, the smoke that came through. I wanted to ask you about uh, your pig. My pig? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the one at your, at your shop. Yeah. How many of you guys, first of all, out there have been to uh, Denny's uh, shop out there in Baltimore? Okay. Yeah. There, there are a few who haven't. Would you talk about the pig? Just a little bit? Oh, my, my pig. Well, I, I, it's a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig. It's my second one. I lost my first one at the six years, you know, and it broke my heart. I mean, I was so destroyed. I loved that pig so much. She was actually in my show in Atlantic City really? at the uh, Showboat Casino. And, make uh, her appear and all of you? No, 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 no. She did a card trick on stage. It was awesome. Wow. Because I, I would toss a deck of cards to someone in the audience. They would remove the cards from the box. They would select any card and sign it. Mm -hmm. And I'd have it put back in the deck and shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And then, as Juan Tamara says, and then I put it back in the box, and then I'd, I'd drop it in a big shopping bag, and I'd lay the, and I'd tell the audience beforehand, this is the most unusual card trick you'll ever see. I probably think so. And I drop the uh, box of cards in the bag, and I'd lay the bag on its side, a stage right. Yeah. And I say, now the object is to find the gentleman's card, and you say, well, what's so unusual about that? And then I had her cued. I had the pig cued to answer to the name of Madonna. So I would, <laughs> I would say, well, look who's going to find the card. Madonna, and she would come walking out from the wings, yeah. and she had a little bow that was designed just like my shoes, and we had her toenails painted red. And she would come out, and I would say, now Madonna is kind of spoiled, so uh, Min would come out, uh, my assistant, and, and Min would lay this rolled up rug on the stage and Madonna would unroll the rug and she'd lay down on the rug and I say, Now Madonna, that gentleman out there, selected a card and he signed it, put it back in the in the in the case, and it's somewhere in that card box amongst those cards yeah. over there in the bag. Madonna, go get his card. And she would get up and walk across the stage and she'd go into the paper bag and her little butt would be sticking out and the <laughs> tail is yeah. going, well they like go around, through, right. is okay. what they do. And she would, like that, and she would come out with this gentleman's signed card in her mouth. And no to way. the audience it appeared as if she opened the box and went through the card <laughs> looking for a signature. Then she'd start to bring it back to me and on, on a good night I could say, no, 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 hand it to the gentleman who picked the card and she'd go to him. And She'd have it in her mouth and she'd hand it to him. Of course, he wouldn't touch it, but, <laughs> but it was just so cool. So anyway, uh, that's what I did with her and I loved her for that. And uh, when I lost her, I was heartbroken. And really you had her for how I only six years, yeah. she died of kidney failure. But uh, you, you know uh, Alan Nguyen, mm -hmm. uh, right. <laughs> Elaine knew Elaine today, Knight, right? but I knew him when he was Alan, when he worked in my show. And uh, he oh, and so his he wife. Was he box jumpers also? Or well, did he, he trained the pig? Did he kind of like kick No, he didn't, see, he didn't work with the pig. Oh, okay. But he, he did a lot of the uh, stage illusions, setting up and everything for our show for about 10 years gotcha. on the road. But, uh, That's when you were doing like the college circuit and everything. We were doing the college okay. circuit and the corporate events. Mm -hmm. But uh, he and his wife were traveling through Virginia and they saw a farm and they saw a bunch of pigs running around. And he and his wife bought me the pig that Your I have pig. now. No, oh, this one, one. Okay. the new one, because I was so yeah. heartbroken. Right. So, uh, so I've had her for 17 years, which in human years I believe is about 125. Yeah. So she's uh, 
and she's doing quite well. So anyone who comes into my shop, you, you come down, you get to see Baby the Pig. <laughs> Now, you had worked uh, the college uh, circuit then for a long time, and then decided that uh, you pretty much worked it to death. Worked it to death. Wasn't much left, and so you decided, I'm going to go open a brick and mortar. Well, no, no. I, I, then I went into corporate, strictly okay. customized corporate events. Yeah. And we did that for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, was, that was very nice. And then I decided to retire, because we okay. did very well. So I bought a nightclub in Washington, D.C., and decided I didn't like losing that much money. So <laughs> I decided it's the entertainment capital of the world right yeah. there. Oh, it's you bet Washington DC. We're it's, right we were in Chinatown. It's, it's right for uh, Chinatown. Oh, That's where we were. We were on the top floor of Tony Chang's restaurant. Okay. Ooh. It was totally Ill 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 illegal. It totally and we they had, didn't allow pigs, I guess. The, well, well, they them, I guess. well, no, they, they allowed pigs because we used to bring them in from New York. And, they, they would, uh, and ask them to pick a car. <laughs> <laughs> but it was totally illegal, and it catered to Chinese businessmen who were over here. Who spoke the language fluently, of course. Uh, Chinese, yeah. Yeah, like there you go. yeah, and then they went into manufacturing magic many years later. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so it had all these really cool boxes and decals and things. Yeah. Okay. But uh, that was, yeah, I gave that up. I didn't like that. You know, I, so uh, I said, well, what do I do in my retirement? Well, let me think of another money losing venture. Let me open magic shop. <laughs> so full of all of that was it. And, uh, you know, I, I always tell people, you know, if I had gone to a bank and said, look, I have this great idea for, for a business. I, I need a loan. And they say, well, what's the business? Well, I'm going to open up a business to sell products to the cheapest people in the world. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't give me a dime, you know. But, uh, but you can invest your own money in something. Ex oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm almost out of my show business money now, so... Uh, so it was, it was so something. successful you decided to open the one in Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Well, Scott year. Alexander talked me into that. Okay. He said, boy, open your shop in Vegas. Man, they all want the kind of stuff you have. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway. but it's remained open now for what, 10 was, years? Yeah, yeah. Vegas, Vegas has been open for over 10 years, and I've been open for 20, and... I still have some money left, still and I'm it. not dead yet. So uh, you know, it works out. You know, and we got that healthcare thing going on. Yeah. You know, we, oh yeah. Oh, he's, we solved the dead crisis. Yeah, he's really going to help. Aside from that, let's uh, tell you what. Move on uh, about something that's really, I think, kind of interesting, and why I wanted to talk with you this evening. I understand that your daughter is a director, producer. Or yes, she something does something about independent film. Independent film. Yeah. She got into this years ago, and uh, she's won some small awards and things like that. And shows like at Sundance and things like that. Throughout. Yeah, that, that okay. kind of thing. Okay. And uh, she came to me one day and. Daddy, would you have an idea for a film? And so she wrote this, she scripted it, she directed it, she, she shot this whole thing with one camera only. Keep this wow. in mind. Uh, she did. Shrink budget. I mean, she, the, you wouldn't pay dollars right? Nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing. <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't charge her my regular fee. Uh, no, actually, I did it for nothing. I didn't did it for nothing. And uh, so she did all the lighting, all the sound, all the editing. It was strictly a one-woman operation, and uh, uh, she asked me to uh, to try it. So I did, and the result is this nine-minute film. It's now on YouTube, and so I, we've got just a, a short clip oh, that I wanted to show. That we don't have a, a lot of time for okay. the whole thing, even though it's nine minutes. Yeah, if you can show that. No, no, no! Pull your legs in. But there's not enough room. What do you mean, not enough room? Magicians have been doing this for centuries! Well, I guess I'm just not getting it. What's to get? What's to get? There's nothing to get! You get in the basket, you pull up tight, I put in the sores, you disappear. That's it! There's nothing to get! Oh. Look, let's try it again. Do it again. Oh, damn it! You are not going to ruin this for me! This is too important a night. There's too many important people. You are not going to make me look like an idiot! I won't. I promise I won't. I'll try harder. I'll get it. Oh, you'll get it all right. Because if you don't, 
You're the one that's going to look like an idiot, not me. Just take 10. Take 10. How about that? Danny Hayes. Yeah, Danny! I got to see the whole thing. It, yeah. it, 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 gets, it gets even darker. It really does. But, uh, and it did that in one take, is that right? Oh, good lord. That was a five day shoot five to get days. nine minutes. Is that yeah, right? It was, it was, I, one, one night I was so soaking wet, I, I could just take my shirt and just wring it out. It, wow. It was that much. Uh, well, the lights and everything work. in there too. Yeah, know. the lights and then. And by the way, that was uh, that uh, stage. That is what's in my magic shop in yeah, Baltimore. Right. It's there. So that real stage is there, and uh, plus other rooms and things like that. Yeah, with the books and all that. That's part yeah, of the shop and all. yeah. So uh, you know, Shot anyone who hasn't been, please you come to it. the shop in Baltimore and uh, get a good look. Because you got a lot of books and everything. In a lot, of, lot of books, a lot now, of books. Uh, you remember question. them. Last question over here, then talking about uh -huh. just uh, your, that's your debut, I guess, of acting uh, in a movie, I assume. Yeah. And, and so you've been acting on stage for so many years. Exactly. Did it seem to come natural to it's you? The same, yeah, it's the same thing. It's sure. the same thing. You know, you're on stage, you're performing, you're acting. You know, as Robert Houdin said, you're an actor playing the part of a magician. So it's the same thing. So you go right into film. And uh, I know uh, uh, Richard Pryor's daughter, Rain Pryor, was at the premiere of this thing. And, uh, you know, I, I was talking to people about it and I said, you know, it's like Richard Pryor. He had been on stage for so many years. Right. When they hired him to do a movie, he just went right in and he did it. Right. So, uh, you know, no method it's acting. Natural people, it's natural for some people. It's natural for some and yeah. not so natural for others. So it's, I thought you did just a fantastic it's job. It's all acting. Ladies and gentlemen, Danny Yeah! I will have a seat. That's right. We move down, and then the next guest comes. U čemu je prednost Amerikan Express prez kreditne kartice? Jednostavnost. Uz korištenje PBZ Revolving kredita kupujete 100%, a plaćate samo 5% mjesečno. Karticu koristite na svim prodanim mjestima u zemlji i inozemstvu. Zgodno, zar ne? Ne zovite odmah 0800-377-575 i zatražite pristupnicu. Flat chest. Las Vegas is the attraction. We only add a little magic to it. Get lost in the moment and have a wonderful time. Oh, so we're back. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I get so wrapped up. Oh, thank you. Welcome back. I'm glad you guys came over here that uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the show. I want to introduce uh, my next guest, someone who's come all the way from uh, New York City, uh, where they don't make uh, paste picante sauce. That's what they talk about, of course, back down home where I'm from. Uh, in Texas, and uh, someone who is the uh, Dean of the American Magician in the uh, Parent Assembly number one, please welcome Master Magician Eric DeCamp. Eric! Yeah. Eric, so glad to uh, have you here, and you're not on the bill, here. you just happened to uh, be I passing through to town. Money, and I understand you needed a guest. So I did. Up. I saw you, and I just kind of wrangled you. I'm the guest. I appreciate here, so that. That's, that's very nice of you. But I'm really happy to see that. Uh, they caught the real Denny Haney on film. <laughs> I mean, I have never <laughs> seen something more real. <laughs> yeah, no, no. That's why I said one take. I thought, you know, that's that's it, you know. I think it was half a take. You never really seen him lose his temper. But it's funny that you played that because I shot a movie about uh, in two thousand and nine. Oh yeah, and that it's was called, it's called <laughs> it's called the Monica. I have no idea where you got the title from. 
Um, Chris Leo. Uh, it's a name that you'll remember. Yeah. And um, I'll Chris, keep it in order. Yeah, keep it in order. And and I actually he came up to me. He's a, he's a magician from New York. He's also a filmmaker. He's done three independent films. And um, so he comes up to me one day and he says, Eric, I, I, I'm shooting this film and we're about three quarters done and I haven't cast this part of Klosterman. I said, what does that mean? And he says, well, I'm, I want you to play this part of the character Klosterman. I'll give you a copy of the script and you can read it and see if you can do it. I said, I've never done acting before. And he looked at me and said, come on. So I said, really, I, I've never done it. So we talked about it. We, uh, my wife Celeste and I went to his uh, house in Long Island and we saw the film and we're looking at this thing. It's amazing what he did, but so I, I had to play this father and it's pretty wild because... Uh, did you have to put gray in your hair or...? Yeah, <laughs> apparently I didn't get it out. <laughs> I was going to say, this was just recently, obviously you haven't had a chance to wash that out. So. I think he's making a hair joke. <laughs> That's why I'm looking at you. <laughs> So you're playing the father. So I play the father, and I and I don't like the kids you're dating. Okay. So it was it was perfect casting. Yeah. <laughs> I had that down. So yeah. that was good. And uh, you got to remind me. I, I should give you a copy of the commercial that I shot back in the nineties. Yeah, I would love to get I that. Did, I did What'd a you TV do? commercial for um, the Discover Card. Really? Like yeah. Well, like, like, Carbone or something? No, no, no. It was manipulation. It was it was hands only. You do the math. Um, <laughs> And it was supposed to run for six weeks. They actually, the Discover card was just bought, it was, it was bought out, um, Novus bought it out at the time from Sears, because okay. Sears started the, the Discover card yes. back in the 80s. Oh, I forgot and then that. Novus bought that, yep. and they started this whole new ad campaign, and they were looking for different things. They felt they had eight different commercials to promote the thing. Mm -hmm. They Nationwide campaign. campaign. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. And, um... They had different things of medical and this, and they wanted to have a magic one. So they had a big open cast, cast call in New York City, and I got a call. I went and checked it out. Um, I saw the, uh, what do they call those little line drawings that they do? A uh, storyboard. Sorry, thank you. <coughs> so nice. It, it, it's so good to know that someone has a college education. <laughs> um, and I, I looked at the thing, and I said, this is not going to work. But I... It was very gracious and gave him some ideas, and at the end of the day, that storyboard never got filmed. It's what I had suggested got filmed. It went over they liked your well. idea better than the yes, creative they, guy that they yes, paid a lot of money to the ad agency. And at that time, you know, CGI wasn't around, yeah. so I did a lot of stuff that they, could, they couldn't understand. I would, it was great, and I manipulated these credit cards, and um, it was supposed to run for six weeks, and it ran during the, the uh, World Series that year. It ran for six months. Wow. Uh, out of all of them, the only one that ran for six months. And then I assume that you get like a, a royalty of some sort? That... Yeah, right. No way. <laughs> no, because I didn't speak. You needed a better They didn't have, no, they, it's, it's, it's hand modeling. Okay. So it's a buyout. Okay. I, I'm not complaining. Kind of like George Costanza. Think... You know, got the hands. And oh, that, exactly. Never, except I don't do ironing. You do ironing. Good for you. <laughs> well, your hands are so pristine. I, I noticed when I shook your hands. Those are the most beautiful do hands. Do you use ever? lotion? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> In a few more years, I will. But anyway, God. I, I know that Will Fern does. You just do his assistant that came out. Oh, yes, yeah, so she's yeah. beautiful. Funny she, she beautiful, man. She, I, I was hoping to have her as a guest, but. <laughs> but she's busy. Yeah. <laughs> she's practicing for the Macy's Parade. Yeah. <laughs> I a few pounds, though. <laughs> So you were just doing hand modeling, and that was your that first. Was, that was okay. my first. That was my big natural. And I actually did another one for that same for that same ad agency for uh, uh, SOS pads, also. Really? Yeah, but that never made it to the TV. Yes, no, and SOS. I mean, those are like. Oh, but that was great, man! You should have seen me. Well, what can you do with back SOS pads? Those things. I was back homing those. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I just did. You know, I did. I forgot. You know, they, I put them into a hat and they disappeared. So let's talk about. I want to ask about Nomonica. So okay, when is that going to be coming out? Actually, is it, it's, it's actually out now. And it's in, it's in film festivals. It um, rings a bell. That's when you said. I mean, aside from Juan's thing, I mean, I thought I had heard, actually heard about this. So. Yeah, and uh, Chris is Chris is a very talented magician, also in his own right. He's really into film making, and uh, as a matter of fact, we we had him shoot a, a memorial this year of a friend of mine by the name of Bob Elliott. You remember Bob? Very well. And uh, yeah, Go ahead, yep. Bob. Fantastic man, fantastic. Why happy was yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we we had him. I had him uh, 
we did a big memorial in New York for him, and he filmed it. He did a fantastic job for the family. It was really beautiful. So he's a very talented guy. But it was, it was quite of an experience because, A, I don't like to see myself on camera. And um, when, I, when he sent me the rushes, I was like, no, this isn't working. But he, he was very happy. He actually, he got decent reviews. So, Did you kind of feel the same way, like with Denny, that uh, I mean, something that kind of came natural? I mean, you didn't feel like you had to get into the part? No, I did. I, 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 well, no. Um, I felt weird at first, and then I got into it. So you, you had know. to kind of reshoot something. Yeah, well, well, we did. And, and he, I mean, it came out pretty good. I, honestly, it came out pretty well. I was surprised at how well it came out. Mm -hmm. So nothing else right now on the horizon that you got uh, in filmmaking, the film industry, I assume. Oh, no. The only thing is I'm in the, I they just shot a thing on Real Magic. which just I out. just got that. Oh, did you get it? Yes, I did. Yeah, it just came out. Uh, yes. Because For Cosmo, they, they had... When I was doing, I did a show in New York called Pure Magic. Uh, David Cassara was a guest that later on did a beautiful article by MUM mm -hmm. on the show. Um, it was a one-man show. I had four runs in New York City, and um, uh, they came and shot the whole thing. They shot the whole. They did a three-camera shoot of the show. It came out really nice. Of course, there's like maybe six minutes of the show. And, and then, in the final product, but it was it was it's a really good re record archive of, of my uh, right. show, and that played in uh, New York. The name of the one man show was again Pure Magic Pure Performance Magic. of Contemporary Conjuring, and it played a few years back, and then it kind of went into hiatus for a while. Yeah, it's in hiatus right now. Okay, <laughs> whatever the heck that means. That means I'm busy doing other things. Okay, <laughs> but uh, now the show I, I had four runs in New York City. I did about seven months worth of uh, performance time. So it was you great. did it in L.A. then too, didn't you? I did it at the castle. That was really incredible. Tell experience. me about that. Um, I was actually I was booked. Sean Farquhar had booked me to do a PCAM, and I figured I was in the West Coast anyway. I got in contact with the castle. Friends at the castle said, "Listen, I'm going to be there. I'm going to have the show with me. Can I? I'd like to be able. To, it's a possibility." And they rarely. This is really incredible. But it was a tremendous honor for me. They, uh, they very rarely give a guy. A 90 minute show or a 75 minute show. Right. So I, I spoke to Max, who was the actor. In the palace? No, it wasn't in the palace. It was in the, the Palo Theater. Okay. Oh, the Palo Theater. The Palo Theater. Okay, downstairs. yes, yeah, yeah. Which okay, I didn't sorry. even know they, that it existed. Mm -hmm. And um, he says, No, we have a theater downstairs. Mm -hmm. This is Max, because he was, he was the booker at the time. And, he's, and, and we talked about it. And um, it was a, a phenomenal <laughs> experience. We were supposed to do one show. Then he called me up and he says, Listen, we, uh, they, the. the um, his assistant said, we'd like to do a second show. Can you do two shows? I said, yeah, all right. I'll do two shows in one day. And then about a week later, they said, listen, the tickets are selling well, so can you do a third show? We don't want to kill you, but can you do a third show? And I was like, sure. And I did three shows. I did a matinee and two evening shows. And it was fantastic. I mean, the people that came out to see the show, the sell out. I mean, the first show was really good. The second show was better. The third show was like off the hook. It was just... It was so much fun. It was, and it was great to see the talent that came out to see me and, and experience a full show as opposed to just, you know, the castle, which right. was a 15 minute, minute shot. Right. And you do it three times, and you do it either the early three times or, or the late. Really late. So you don't get really a chance to right. do a one man show. And that was great because I got an opportunity to take castle members and see what we do here on the East Coast. And people who actually appreciate magic and came to see magic also. Without so a they, doubt. Yeah, they loved it. Without a doubt. And that, 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 I remember that. That was awesome too. I, that was I, I that was that show. was an incredible experience. Perfect, kind of in the. Not they the built a, They built the theater. Built theater for you. They built the theater for my show. One hundred and seventy-five. Awesome. Yeah, it was incredible. Hull Youngblood, who ran the thing, did a great job, and it was it was a, I was a, such an honor, and it was so much fun. And I had my buddy came in from Chicago to introduce me. Bill Malone Bill, came in, flew yeah, in, surprised me, and, yeah. and did the introduction, and it yeah. was great. Yeah. We had, we had so much fun. Well, you also <laughs> performed then at the uh, for the castles. I recall it was when uh, David Sandys failed or aborted. No, I wasn't, wasn't on that. that thing, no, no, that. But I thought you were at the castle at the time. They were coming. They were going to be. No, no, that was part me. of that. No, that was that was Mark D'Souza. I, I, <laughs> I thought they were coming in to see the show, and then they were going to be going on the cruise or afterwards or. No, Mark was, that. Mark was responsible was Mark. For, okay. for sinking the ship <laughs> and the Titanic. Well, I know there were no card tricks that were on the end there because the captain was standing on the deck. But, oh. Uh, oh, oh, God. <laughs> Anyhow. Do <laughs> <laughs> the hair thing. Do the hair thing. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That is just beautiful. <laughs>
That is Professor Erwin Corey gone crazy. Erwin Corey. Erwin Corey. Erwin Corey. Erwin well, listen, I appreciate you coming oh, by. It's great to be here. This is a fantastic thing. thing. It's fun. It's Joe Casilla. It's my buddy, man. Joey C. Over it's Joey C., man. I'm glad Who, who's dead? Than He's representing another dead guy. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, please, we want to thank again our guests over here at the camp. Thank yeah. You. Es para profesionales en cerveza. Excuse me. I'm thinking of a number between one and thirty-seven. It's thirty-seven. It's a nice hat. Thank you. Welcome. You just saw Lady in Hell. Without any repercussion. Whoa. You know, it would kind of look a little bit better if it was coming to Don't. Are you Italian? No. No. Flaming lips. You're up. Your TV, music, photos, and videos, all living happily together inside one powerful home computer. Introducing the Media Center PC from HP. And we're back. Thank you. Right. We are back live then again, uh, and we're going to introduce our next guest, someone who has come then all the way from uh, Michigan, or say Colton, Michigan, actually further north than that. Uh, she gets around doing a lot of shows, not just real, uh, a lot of uh, children's shows. She's a fantastic lecturer. If you guys may have missed it, that uh, she was one of the first lecturers out of the box uh, the first day yesterday. And she was talking about marketing techniques and everything, and uh, she is an expert in that. If you guys have any questions or anything that you'd like to talk with her about then a little bit later, I'm sure that she can kind of give you some ideas or some helpful tips uh, that you may have overlooked. Uh, someone, again, is very busy uh, not only doing parties, but a lot of corporate things across America. Please welcome Jamie Taylor. Yeah. 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 Neil always said kiss the old man. There we go. Well, you got to work on your way down. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Neil, Neil. <laughs> Now, wait, before we continue, Scott, I, yes. you asked Denny about the drinks in the green room. Yes, I did. What did you think? I have a complaint. You don't like that? apple martinis? They're, ugh, it's a foo girl drink. So I happen to bring my own cabana boy. Cabana boy. Oh. Woo. <laughs> 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 Much better. Thank uh, you, Cabana Boy. Sorry, I didn't bring you one. Uh, th th thank you. I like working. Here, hold this. I'm so, so glad. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's why it's late night. Come on, we'll bring out your doll. I'll bring out your doll. There we go. There we go. As you were, I She's feeling a little deflated, I'm sure. Uh, so how are you feeling this evening? Doing great? Better Fabulous. all the time. That's right. after a couple yes, of these. Right. Yeah. So you'd rather be who of all people? Eva who? Ava Gardner. Ava Gardner. Ava Gardner. Ava Gardner. Ava Gardner. And that's because? She got to sleep with Frank Sinatra. But didn't a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. 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 Heard, I but I just want to be Ava Gardner. Okay. Go to Laughlin and shoot up the desert with Frank Sinatra Is that kind and of, drink martinis. Do you kind of uh, think you were born out of time? Yes. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I... Jimmy Buffett says, you know, he was a pirate born 200 years too late, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, you kind of feel like that you missed the, the era where that you yeah, may the, have the excelled, 40, like 50s era. I Del don't O'Dell know. or somebody you kind of been back in there. Or Even worse, I kind of always wanted to be a Victorian woman and, you know, arrive at the resort with my trunks and somebody carrying them for me. You know, it's whalebone kind of things that keep your well, how, everything corset all together and all that kind of stuff. How does it feel, Daddy? <laughs> 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 it's been a 
long day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of girls at conventions. Mm-hmm. Speaking of I, that, truly, there's that's no right. Way. So uh, you kind of feel like uh, uh, special whenever this year at a magic convention, I guess, and a lot of guys uh, talk with you, being well, a yeah, pretty like, single young lady. Well, um, you know, Silly Billy once said to myself and another friend of mine that lives in New York, Jennifer Moyer, she's Silly said, "Wow." So, going to a magic convention as a girl must be like a guy going to a ballerina convention. <laughs> Sorry, boys, you're not ballerinas. <laughs> hmm, okay. But uh, you have Sandra Bullock hairstyle there. I kind of like that, that you uh, working. Working, can't change that a little bit like that. That's good. Um, no, actually, um, being a girl in magic is I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I have the best job in the world. Uh, one of the best compliments the boys can give me, the guys can give me, is they truly, honestly slap me on the ass and say, Taylor, you're just one of the guys. And it's the best compliment that I can get from the guys. That's true. So, uh, all of you guys uh, have uh, 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 me on the ass. <laughs> the line forms here. Take your number. Take it right to that. No, I truly, truly feel blessed. Um, I truly feel that I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Um, you love doing what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. You can't think of anything else that you would rather do. Or do you no, be like you travel a lot of places? I get the best places, job or? in the world. I get the best friends in the world. I get to pay, get paid to go someplace. Uh, truly, the guys look out after me. I truly feel that they have my back. They want to see me succeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of girls in magic that I feel have a chip on their shoulder, they think they're owed something just because they're a girl, and I've always felt that I have to be just as good or better than the guys, and I've always truly wanted to earn it on my own. Uh, why would I stab, honestly, my source of knowledge in the back? There are really no women I want to learn from. So why would I stab you and Eric and Denny in the, and Mark in the back? Because I need to make friends with you, I need to Learn. Right. Right. Why would I do that? It makes no sense to have that chip on the shoulder and say, you owe me something just because I'm a girl. No, I need to earn it just like you have to earn it. Well, there are just a handful of women. I know that they have had a Women in Magic conference a right. time or two. Uh, they're like a half dozen. Or, I mean, it seems like they're like... And it died. Why well, do what I happened get together? And, I don't know. I never went. I was never invited. If I, they were going to have to pay me to get me there. <laughs> You were working, and they were just putting together right. a convention. Right. Okay. What? You're going to go hang out with a bunch of girls and be catty well, with the guys? No, I can do that on my own with my regular girlfriends. Obviously, it, uh, you have that gimmick, that thing, so it's a gimmick, you know, or a, a hook that you are a woman as opposed to a male magician, and do you, uh, you play that up, and you're like in the publicity material you were showing, you know, like uh, some pictures that were... That, that I could get away, then he would look good in those outfits, maybe, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, this is really kind of strange, you know, in the real world, women are always complaining that they don't get paid enough, and we get a bad rap, and yada yada. Bob Bengel once told me, Jania, you can charge more, because you're a girl. Yeah. And I'm like, kind of, that's kind of reverse philosophy out there in the regular working You're world. a novelty. You're, right. you're a novelty among novelties. Right. And, um, yeah, I use it to your advantage, but... And, and, and does it work? I don't know. Does it yet? I don't know. Think about the sex change. How much? Real use coming out. <laughs> now, when you yeah, he's going to start hollering at you in a minute. Be careful. You can't fit in that box. That's right. Well, down boy. So, uh, we were working a lot of uh, corporate venues. When you do, have you worked a lot of trade shows? Really, I have not done that many. Is that shows. something that you have thought about doing? I would or what like it? to work more yeah. trades, like all of us like to. Work. I consider myself a general practitioner of magic. The more you do, the more you're going to get hired. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of take whatever's coming along. I mean, right? You know, kind of like Jay Marshall. Jay Marshall. Uh, this story was told about Jay Marshall. Somebody called up Jay Marshall and said, "Hey, can you play the bagpipes?" And Jay said, "No problem. I can do that." <laughs> and Jay didn't know how to play the bagpipes, and he went out to learn to play the bagpipes. I get a call from a festival, hey, we need a 1800s character, which you have seen, yep. uh, to perform 1800s character. No problem, I can do that. Just like Jay, I'm like, now what am I gonna do? <laughs> you know, so I did a little research, I came with the 1800s costume, I didn't do any plastic looking props, and I've had the gig now for five years. And I'll be doing it again starting next weekend. 
So I learned that from Jay. Just yeah. you can do it, and then after you say yes, you figure out how you can do it. I've heard a similar story then about uh, Doug Henning. You know, then that first television special, in which that uh, I believe was Mobile had come to him and had, had asked Mobile Oil, yeah, if he could do the underwater uh, Houdini escape, and he said sure can. And then he called Jim uh, or called. Uh, Gone. Johnny gone to say, say, how do I do this? You know, can you build one of these things? I had no idea, but he'd sold it first, you know, say yes, and then ask questions. Right, it's a lot easier, you know, you come up with a show idea, and you th sell it first, and then put it together. Why waste all that time putting it together and right. it doesn't sell, and you're like pulling your hair out? I think uh, John Calvert had a similar story about, uh, was it uh, Jack Wynn, I believe, who was in Hollywood, and there was a movie uh, he had left, and he was... Uh, have you heard the story? About Jack Wynn? Yeah, I think it was, you know, with uh, John Calvert, and he went then, he was visiting, and uh, that he and uh, Jack had left the house, apparently, but he was just knocking on his front door, and the phone rang, and he kind of went around through the back door, answered the phone, and it was uh, some Hollywood agent saying that they're having a casting call, and they needed a magician. And they said, well, you know, Mr. Gwynn's not in, but there is another magician I can recommend. Uh, you know, Mr. Calvert happens to be in town. And he said, well, have him give me a call. He said, I will. Uh, you know, so, so he kind of stole the twins Well, there. he moved back in Chicago. He had already <laughs> left. I mean, and so he was out. They needed like that afternoon. And he just happened to be in the right place at the it's right time. It's all about Literally, timing. You know, all picking up the phone at the right time. You know, time. Bob Lund used to say, Bob Lund was, uh, for those of you, I don't know if you know Bob Lund, uh, he had this wonderful, fabulous American Museum of Magic Marshall. in Marshall, Michigan. And Bob Lund was a... Uh, a cheerleader, a fan of the underdog magician. And the best part of going to the museum was the basement, because then he had files oh, yeah. and files and files upon everybody's, you know, uh, everybody. everybody, right? And he loved to collect things with the underdog magician. And he used to get this great pitch at the end of his tour, and he would say, you, <laughs> you are three rungs on the entertainment ladder. You're three, three rungs up from the guy that makes dirty movies. The guy that makes dirty movies, the clown, you're the magician. And half of it, <laughs> right, that's where you are in the entertainment ladder. And half, it, the, half of it is, it's luck. It's total luck and being in the right place at the right time. And, you know, Bobby used to always tell that in the basement, and then you pull out your file and you pull something out, and you go, oh, how'd you find that on yeah. me? You were in a third level, or, even, or you were on the first level. I was in the clown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> below that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe, yeah, I was an assistant, so I must be a magician. So what's uh, in the cards right now? What do you see coming up on the horizon? For our crystal, crystal ball. Um, mm. uh, trying to pay for a house in Harbor Springs, Michigan as a single girl, turning tricks for a living. That's a small town. Yeah, how's that working out for you? Well, in the winter, it's not so good. That corner's a little cold. <laughs> there you <Wait>. go. <laughs> 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 uh, well, Miss Taylor has every weekend from now until the end of October booked. I would like to do more theater gigs. I did about six theater gigs this year. I really like theater gigs. Right. And believe it or not, for all of you local magis, Jeff Carson and I will be working Brussels Theater on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Yeah. So you come out and see be there. Magic Girl. Because I'm the we better do. looking one on the bill. And you get a special $5 discount, I think. But That's right. If you take one of those little cards on the, the registration. So share telling your friends and neighbors on that. Jenny, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you, you being a guest over here. Thank you very much. We'll be back after this commercial message. magic that you can learn how to do. Order the amazing video that teaches powerful, impossible street magic. Perform incredible street tricks the same day. Oh my God. Uh, oh. This incredible two-hour video is like three videos packed into one. I picked up his credit card and held like that. I just took it over and I said, you know, bing. Over two hours of mind-blowing street magic taught step by step. Check it out on the web at illusionist.com or call the number on your screen now. Illusionist.com What is luck? Luck is probability taken personally. It is the excitement of bad math. Direct from their Hit Network special, the world's greatest magicians live on stage. Experience the adventure and power of Grand Illusion. Wild and beautiful First Lady of Magic, Melinda. Magic's hottest sensation, Brett Daniels. Ridiculous and outrageous, Matt King. And world champion, Greg Fruin. 
Sponsored by Milton Bradley's Magic Works. Don't miss The World's Greatest Magicians. Litter. Wouldn't it be nice if we could make it just disappear? Litter isn't going to go away magically. This is the only way most of it's going to disappear. So come on, join in and help can litter. A public service message from the Boy Scouts of America. I'm going to do that. We're going to introduce my next guest, someone who that, uh, again, if you may have seen his lecture, then uh, that was, uh, I believe, on the same day. It was uh, shortly after uh, Janians, uh, yesterday afternoon in which that he was talking a little bit not just about marketing but also about the importance of you know how that you would select someone in the audience uh, and a lot of important business tips and professional tips uh, for the restaurant uh, and, and presentational things and also I think he's a very creative uh, inventor as well has a lot of really cool things uh, on his uh, DVD and everything please welcome uh, David Cursero yeah. Good evening up over there. Thank you. Hey, good. David, welcome. Thanks very much for coming over here then. Thank you very much for... You came all the way from over there. All the way over there. <laughs> That's right. We're glad that you did. Thank you very I much. I just wanted to uh, chat with you a little bit about uh, restaurants. Now, you've been working... Uh, at one point, you had six different restaurants. Yeah, my busiest point was six restaurants a month. Mm -hmm. um, and that just wiped me out. After a while, I ended up sort of getting a little bit more selective after that. How many um, in a week would you work? Two or three, four or five a week at wow. different times. Some of them were once a month, some of them were twice a month, one sure. was every week. Um, so right. I became a little more selective because it was just, it was tearing me up. But at my high point, it was six a month. Now, was it the uh, same kind of venue? I mean, in other words, was it a family? Was it a no. steakhouse? Or they they were very out? different. There were beautiful Italian, uh, elegant places. There were steakhouses. And there was, there was one good old bar where the patrons showed up to, uh, to drink. Okay. <laughs> they were not there to have a nice meal. They were not there to, there to watch magic. They're there to count they were the there two. to get effed up. Yeah, and uh, count the number and, two. And, yeah, that's what, yeah. that's what they did. That's what they did. So, uh, well, in, in getting each of those things, before I get to that, I wanted to talk about your attire. I mean, was there something special that you would wear? I mean, for each place, or did you wear like the same uh, jacket, or did you wear like a, uh, a loud jacket? I like some attire, like my, like, like my car. Attire. Like, what kind of attire? I was like, there were four good years. Four good years. <laughs> Um, the Michelin. The Michelin. The Michelin man. Okay. Um, no, there were, uh, I mean, obviously they were tailored specifically towards where I was performing. Uh, I think it was Jeff McBride once said, dress like you're going somewhere better later. Okay. And I like that. So wherever Jeff I was performing. Jeff McBride said that? Jeff McBride said that. <laughs> <laughs> what does Jeff McBride wear on Halloween? <laughs> A white beater. Danny, he said on Halloween. <laughs> so each restaurant, my, my attitude was always, I want to dress a little bit better. Not a yeah. lot better, but a little bit better. Yeah. And so in finding those uh, uh, different restaurants, did, did you just kind of fall into them? Did you solicit them hard? or? Well, there were some that I was, I w uh, other magicians that I knew had a normal gig at, and they would have me fill in once in a while for. Other ones were ones who found me, I would perform at a party, and they would come to me and say, hey, I own a restaurant, would you mind coming? And the rest of them were me scouting out the locations, finding venues that I thought would be appropriate for restaurant magic, going, introducing the concept of what a restaurant magician was, right. and then ultimately pitching the idea and, and closing the sale. And you tried to do it within a certain square or, uh, radius of your home, I assume, so no. that we, you just drove wherever you no, wanted okay. to go. Well, again, I, I talk about this a little bit, but I always search for restaurants that have, the biggest things you want to look for are places that have a nice, inviting environment and have competition in the area. Yeah. Because if you want to sell restaurant magic, you can't just sell that you're a great magician. You have to sell the fact that they need a differentiator. They need something that's going to make them unique to other restaurants in the area. That's what's going to pull customers in. So when I would drive around and I would see a nice restaurant or I would see a place that I think might benefit, I would look around and say, all right, are there other restaurants in the area? Can I pitch myself as something that's going to make that restaurant different and therefore attract customers? That's Don't right. I sound like I know what I'm talking about? I really do. 
I don't. I should do marketing. <laughs> That's right. Ever since I got this little pot belly pig named Madonna, things are really good turn around. <laughs> well, <laughs> or you can get a blow up one. Or right, either one. Pig. There we go. That's right. Uh, so uh, you were doing uh, restaurants then for a long time, and then you say you, you had done like six at one time, and now you're doing a lot fewer. Is that because you found that you were doing more corporate shows, or you really don't care to go? Continue in the direction with restaurants, or uh, the big. There were two. Big, there were two huge reasons why I cut down the amount of restaurants I, I do. Um, Matthew and Daniel, those are my twin boys Children. that were born yeah. uh, about two year, almost two years old now. And so, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so when Matthew and Daniel came around, uh, you know, it was tough to me to take every Sunday, every Saturday sure. night, every Thursday, and, and say goodbye and stuff like that. So right. I said, you know what? Let's focus on just certain areas and. Uh, it's so selfish. I know. <laughs> I know. Here, learn the ropes. That's amazing. My secret in. That was from the first one. Did anybody else hear that, or am I having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> I did that joke for you. Yeah, All right, forget. Right. I did that joke. Okay. I did. <laughs> I did that joke. You <laughs> wonder over there. Uh, so I. So yeah. So that was a cognate. It was a choice by me to sort of pull back a little bit and and pull back. Now, when you got into restaurants to begin with, was your your goal to continue to work restaurants for a long term period or were you looking to try to find uh, jobs outside the restaurant by making contacts? Both. So I, I'd ultimately want, I, I think the restaurant is a beautiful venue to do magic. Number one, as a magician, number one, you have a lot of turnover so you're going to get new audiences all the time. You're, it's doing, in my opinion, you're there for two hours, you're doing 30 performances. Right. So you're going to get, and you're going to get people who come back to see you again and again and again. So for those people, you have to designate new material. Right. You're going to get people who come in and bring their friends. So I, I saw you last week. Do that trick for my friend again. So now you have to be able to do the same trick uh, uh, several weeks in a row, but perhaps make it a little bit different each time so that the first person doesn't get bored and the second person still gets to see the effect. Right. So you, it's really like a, you're in the trenches. I mean, Paul Green's DVD was called In the Trenches because that's what you're doing. You're in there and you're fighting and you're learning how to do magic in an incredibly quick speed. Right. So I knew that I would be growing as a magician by getting a lot of restaurant work and by really getting that repetition table to table. And then at the same time, what better way is it to sort of solicit or look for private corporate gigs and to be able to audition 30 times in a two hour period. Mm -hmm. So I saw, I saw two different advantages. And so at that point, were you doing like birthday parties or trying to push more towards corporate or doing a little bit of everything, whatever it comes to? A little bit of everything. I mean, I, I, I love doing kids' birthday parties. I love having that sort of connection there. I love getting dressed up and doing the more formal cor corporate stuff. And I like sort of getting down and dirty and, and doing the restaurant work as well. So right. whatever sort of show could potentially come out of whatever table I was performing at, that's what I focus towards. If down and dirty. Down and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little souvenir. <laughs> Since the 70s, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you remember the 70s. There's a couple kids here. The 70s used to be a decade. <laughs> and the 60s before that. If you remember the 60s, you weren't in it. Uh, as said, uh, airplane. Uh, so anyhow, you uh, so still do a few restaurants, and then, uh, but you have like a, a full-time regular job in the daytime, and that you're a statistician or something. I, I work in marketing, yeah. so it's my job to be able to it's specialize in what's called adding brand tracking. So telling companies if their advertising is reaching the right message and conveying the right image for their particular brand. Mm -hmm. So I went to college. I got my degree in marketing. Which, if there's anybody out there who is is going to college and you know wants to be a magician but wants to get the education as well, marketing is a perfect perfect direction to go into because right. marketing has helped me to has helped me in magic to be able to establish myself and get more gigs and get my promotional material out there material out there and then conversely magic's helped me in marketing you know when you're in marketing you have to stand up in front of very important clients and deliver a 60 minute presentation and you have to try to keep it I don't want to say fun and entertaining, but at least interesting. At least keep the ca you know keep the audience's attention. And there's no better way to be able to do that than the skills that I learned in magic. And I think it was interesting to talk about being a statistician that uh, you talked about the Julia Roberts trick. Yeah, you know, the, uh, the UPC, and that's kind of an ongoing thing. You're keeping actual statistics as to how mm -hmm. many times. That you want to tell a little bit about? Sure, that? I, I performed the, the classic baby gag effect, which a lot of magicians do, except. What I started doing was actually keeping tabs as far as what the audience is. So when you ask an audience member to name an actress, mm -hmm. 
I noticed after a while that Julia Roberts' name was coming up a little more often than some other actresses. And I thought to myself, you know what? If I had a photo of Julia Roberts in the envelope with the baby gag, I might hit it once in a while. Right. And so I began keeping, and this is going on three years now, I've been keeping track, uh, and we're talking, at this point, well over 500 performances of this baby gag, and I started keeping little check marks, and I would sort of say, all right, who did I ask? Was it a male or female, and what was their approximate age? And then what was their net result of an answer? And what I found was that, little, little tip, little tip. I'm tipping what's on the DVD. Yeah, well, I think this is interesting stuff. Gee, there's only a few people here tonight, you say, that's hard to benefit of staying up late. That's what it is. <laughs> so what I found was that whenever I would ask a woman, but roughly between the ages of 30 and 60, and it's, again, sort of a, a guess, Julia Roberts' name came up about 30% of the time. Jennifer Aniston's name came up about 15% of the time, and, Julia, and Angelina Jolie's name came up about 5% of the time. So really only looking at about 45 to 50% of the time, they would name one of these three actresses. The other 50% of the time, random, got total, total random options. But what I discovered was when I was doing the baby gag, if I had three outs, I could get a hit about 50% of the time. So I take out the photo of the, the two babies, which is part of the baby, but also in the envelope is a photo of Julia Roberts. Mm -hmm. On the back of the envelope is a photo of Jennifer Aniston. And when I select my volunteer, I select it by tossing a paper ball into the audience. That paper ball is a photograph of Angelina Jolie. So I've got three outs. Yeah. So when I ask the woman in the audience, please name an actress, if they say Julia Roberts, I can do my gag. And then I pull out the photo of Julia Roberts, it's a miracle. If they say Jennifer Aniston, after I do the gag, I turn the envelope over, it's a miracle. If they say Je uh, Angelina Jolie, after I do the gag, I ask them to open up the paper ball they're holding, I have a miracle. And if they name another actress, I do the gag, and it's over, which is the way most magicians have been doing it for, for decades now. So what I just found was by keeping stats, by actually listening to what my audience said and keeping track of it, I was able to, to develop a nice little routine around it. And also the odds of increase if it's a certain age woman. Right. I found when I did this to men, I got too, variety, too much of a variety of answers. I like the largest percentage woman that came up was in the 12, 13% which was not enough confidence for me to be able to make a prediction on. And when I picked younger women or older women, again, there, the discrepancy was much too much. Right. Interesting. Thank you. Well, there you go. Get a little, few more little tips over there. I'd say we'll come right back after I think we're going to have another uh, commercial message uh, over here or something. Yeah. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.
Thank you guys very much. We've had a few technical difficulties. Got started a little bit late, but we're still wrapping up. I think started at the uh, to be an hour, and it uh, finished up at about that time then as well. I want to thank each of my guests over here uh, very much. I want to thank uh, Denny Haney. Thank you, Denny, for uh, being here. Uh, and also want to thank Daniel Taylor. Thank you, and good luck. On, uh, and Eric Camps, thank you very much.